the square of the absolute value of z1 plus z2 plus z3 can be written as the product of z1 plus z2 plus z3 and its conjugate. And this is equal to z1 plus z2 plus z3 multiplied by the conjugate of z1 plus the conjugate of z2 plus the conjugate of z3. Opening this up, we get z1 times the conjugate of z1 plus z1 times the conjugate of z2 plus z1 times the conjugate of z3 plus z2 times the conjugate of z1 plus z2 times the conjugate of z2 plus z2 times the conjugate of z3 plus z3 times the conjugate of z1 plus z3 times the conjugate of z2 plus z3 times the conjugate of z3. This can be rearranged as z1 times the conjugate of z1 plus z2 times the conjugate of z2 plus z3 times the conjugate of z3 plus z1 times the conjugate of z2 plus z2 times the conjugate of z1 plus z1 times the conjugate of z3 plus z3 times the conjugate of z1 plus z2 times the conjugate of z3 plus z3 times the conjugate of z2. Now z1 times its conjugate is equal to the square of the absolute value of z1. Similarly, the next term is equal to the square of the absolute value of z2 and the following term is the square of the absolute value of z3. The next term can be written as z1 times the conjugate of z2 plus the conjugate of z1 times the conjugate of z2. And this is equal to 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z2. Similarly, the following term is equal to 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z3. And the last term is equal to 2 times the real part of z2 times the conjugate of z3. Therefore, the square of the absolute value of z1 plus z2 plus z3 can be written as the square of the absolute value of z1 plus the square of the absolute value of z2 plus the square of the absolute value of z3 plus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z2 plus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z3 plus 2 times the real part of z2 times the conjugate of z3. Let's call this result 1. Now in result 1, replace z1 with minus z1 and we therefore get the square of the absolute value of minus z1 plus z2 plus z3 is equal to the square of the absolute value of z1 plus the square of the absolute value of z2 plus the square of the absolute value of z3 minus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z2 minus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z3 plus 2 times the real part of z2 times the conjugate of z3. Let's call this result 2. Similarly, in result 1, replace z2 with minus z2. We get the square of the absolute value of z1 minus z2 plus z3 is equal to the square of the absolute value of z1 plus the square of the absolute value of z2 plus the square of the absolute value of z3 minus 2 times the real part of 
z1 times the conjugate of z2 plus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z3 minus 2 times the real part of z2 times the conjugate of z3. Let's call this result 3. Again, in result 1, replace z3 with minus c3 and we get the square of the absolute value of z1 plus z2 minus z3 is equal to the square of the absolute value of z1 plus the square of the absolute value of z2 plus the square of the absolute value of z3 plus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z2 minus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z3 minus 2 times the real part of the conjugate of z2 times the conjugate of z3. Let's call this result 4. Now adding results 1, 2, 3 and 4. On the left hand side we get the square of the absolute value of z1 plus z2 plus z3 plus the square of the absolute value of minus z1 plus z2 plus z3 plus the square of the absolute value of z1 minus z2 plus z3 plus the square of the absolute value of z1 plus z2 minus z3. On the right hand side we have the square of the absolute value of z1 plus the square of the absolute value of z2 plus the square of the absolute value of z3 plus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z2 plus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z3 plus 2 times the real part of z2 times the conjugate of z3 plus the square of the absolute value of z1 plus the square of the absolute value of z2 plus the square of the absolute value of z3 minus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z2 minus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z3 plus 2 times the real part of z2 times the conjugate of z3 plus the square of the absolute value of z1 plus the square of the absolute value of z2 plus the square of the absolute value of z3 minus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z2 plus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z3 minus 2 times the real part of z2 times the conjugate of z3 plus the square of the absolute value of z1 plus the square of the absolute value of z2 plus the square of the absolute value of z3 plus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z2 minus 2 times the real part of z1 times the conjugate of z3 minus 2 times the real part of z2 times the conjugate of z3. Note that on the right hand side the square terms combine and all the remaining terms cancel. And therefore, the right hand side simplifies to 4 times in brackets the square of the absolute value of z1 plus the square of the absolute value of z2 plus the square of the absolute value of z3. And this is the required result.